Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Revit Pure Live. I am your host, Nicolas Catelier. I am an architect, a BIM specialist, and the founder of the website RevitPure.com. Uh, Revit Pure Live is a show where we help you become a better Revit user and, of course, explore other topics related to BIM, not only Revit. Already some people in the house. Uh, we've got uh, Ryan from Jacksonville, Florida, Agustina from Uruguay, and Andre from New Zealand. Pedro from Porto, Portugal. So hi to everyone joining in the chat. Keep typing where you're from. Always fun uh, to see where people are watching from. And happy new, new year to everybody. Uh, we are live right now, January 11th, uh, 2023. You might be watching the replay later in the future, but right now we're live on this very day. So before moving on uh, with the guests, uh, RevitPure.com slash pamphlets. Since 2016, we've been developing uh, free PDF guides about various Revit topics, including railings, phases, coordinates, plan notes. And um, these guides have been downloaded more than 30,000 times by various Revit users. And you can download the entire collection of the 26 pamphlet at RevitPure.com slash pamphlets. Uh, the most popular guide is probably about coordinates, which continues to be uh, one of the most popular blog posts on this website and on the YouTube channel as well. Apparently, lots of people are confused about Revit's coordinate system. And we've got uh, more people saying where they're from. We've got Sergey from Georgia, I assume Eastern Europe. Uh, we've got, uh, what else have we got? Bert from rainy California. Uh, Christopher from Montana. Uh, Butch from Durham, uh, North Carolina. So hi, everyone. Excited to be here. And during the show, don't hesitate to ask questions. So uh, today's guest is a repeat guest. He's Randall Stevens, and he is the CEO of Vail. And in the description of this video, we can find our first conversation together. So I bring you Randall. How are you, Randall? Good. How are you, Nick? Thanks I'm pretty good. Back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nice seeing you back. Yeah, I think our last session was probably February or March of 2022. Close to you. Yeah. Yes, you gave us an overview of uh, Avail at, at that time. But I will assume that some people um, didn't watch the first session or have no idea what is Avail. So can you tell me what Avail is? Yeah. Yeah. Um... So Avail was introduced in 2017 uh, is when we introduced the product. The original mission or kind of goal was to help solve really the problems that are inherent with trying to organize files of any type, you know, in a, in a traditional file system. So obviously in this industry, there's a lot of content, a lot of data that's being reused and organized libraries of things. And um, what we, you know, had experience and understood was that there was the, uh, you know, storing and trying to access those things in Windows file folders. It kind of reached, you know, I, I would claim when we started working on this six, seven years ago, kind of had reached its its uh, ultimate conclusion. We should find better ways to be able to do this. So we started working on Avail uh, as a way, um, really a, a new front end. Uh, it ultimately is a search engine, but uh, I'll show you some of the uh, some of the newer features, but it's a it's a way to organize, uh, makes it much easier to get to information. Uh, so we do that in general, um, kind of any kind of content or file types that are being used in the industry, um, you can organize and use Avail for that. We obviously, uh, because of the heavy use of Revit and very specific Revit content problems. We've, you know, what I say, taken a deep dive on trying to solve some very specific problems around Revit. So happy to talk about that today, too. But, you know, I think we're going to talk about container libraries. Or some people call them warehouse files, but uh, there's just some inherent challenges with that kind of content that we've we've taken a stab at trying to uh, to help solve. Uh, yeah. So one of my first questions, I'll put myself on the shoe of, let's say, a small business owner or a small business. BIM manager at a small firm will ask a question, why would I need the Veil or any content management platform? Why can I not use just folders on Windows or putting the files on my template or having a container of files? Uh, why would I need this a solution like this? 
Yeah, good question. There's probably no one answer to that, you know, in different um, different firms, probably, uh, you know, the 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 value of what we're doing probably varies in different ways. Um, I, I'd say, you know, we've, we're, we have a lot of uh, very large customers. Uh, so I think probably the idea that information is going to be, you know, common, common things like libraries of files that you want a lot of people to, to use or to get to that information. Uh, there's very clearly a value proposition to having a, you know, not only a system to help you organize it, but make that information available to those users in a, in an easy way. Um, so there's a very clear kind of uh, value proposition for those firms where there, where there are, you know, kind of lots of people I'd say that need to get to this information as you go in the opposite direction, you know, we've got customers that are single sole practitioners that use avail. So it, uh, it, the, you know, there's value there too. Uh, what I would say is, you know, I, uh, when we first started working on it, the firm for myself, uh, because I was involved not only in the, in the product development, but running the company and doing all kinds of different things, uh, a little bit of the background, I, this, uh, avail grew out of a, of another company called arc vision, which I founded back in the nineties. So I've been in, in the architecture and visualization and content business for a long time. But um, what I found when we first started working on Avail that now I would claim that I would not think of going back to Windows folders was all of our marketing content and assets. Like, you know, you've got just years and, and lots of this kind of information sitting on the network. And then once, once that was in Avail, it just made it so much easier. So like for myself, one of the things that I've done is I've literally, I've been in the industry for 30 years now. I literally have a digital archive of multiple companies and multiple products and all those things that are sitting on these terabytes and terabytes of drives. I have an avail account where I've indexed all of that and it's basically all searchable. So I can usually jump and find, get to something very quickly, uh, which would have been a nightmare if I was trying to remember or try to go back and search through windows for those types of things. So, uh, yeah. So, so you were saying that it's not just for Revit, you can use it to index any file yeah that's any. a good point i was thinking i oh, just just going to folders and folders and trying to search for the right file it, it seems seems to be getting a bit outdated yeah the other uh i think you know in part of what we'll i'll we'll talk about today and i'll i'll show you how this works but we did take this deep dive on on how to solve revit container library kind of management and access and we we've definitely seen a lot of I'll just say back down to the smaller firms because it's such a problem, whether you're one person or a thousand people trying to use and get access to it, that the way we've gone about solving that seems to have a lot of uh, merit when, you know, we get comments like sometimes when people will see it, they're like, I can't believe that everybody's not using this or doesn't want to use it. And it's, mm -hmm. it's just that inherent, you know, we can, we can dive into the details of no pun intended of what the complexities are of, of managing, you know, I like to say everything that's not a family in Revit is really difficult to kind of manage because those, those kinds of assets don't have their own single file type. They can't live as an individual object. Uh, so there's some just inherent complexities with what that means to uh, organize access, get back to that kind of information. So uh, I already have a few questions in the chat. And one that seems to be related to one of the topics that we have planned for today from Jim. I have a veil, but still, still struggling with making it work for me. My question is, what are the advantages or differences between container, warehouse, library projects to keep assets in versus a veil? So I don't know if you want to jump straight to that or uh, you still have a couple more things. If you want, I can uh, share your screen so people can see yeah, the, yeah, the, wanna, the, the avail uh, interface. There you go. Now people can if see If you want to do that, I've got... Um, well, uh, to, to specifically just answer that question, the, you know, if, if you're going to access, I'll just say anything that's not a family that, that can't be saved in an extension .rfa, you inherently now have to save that data in a, in a template file or an RVT file, a project file. And, you know, my claim would be that, you know, auto that worked that works okay and it, and and it probably worked okay for a certain amount of time in revit especially if 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 you wanted to basically start a project with a template that just had everything in it 
because then you just start a project file and if everything's there the i think what what the industry i'd say is has grown or as it's matured has found is that you know it's kind of antithetical to keeping your actual project data you know without becoming bloated so it's like uh you know if you start your project by putting everything but the kitchen sink in that project file which is the way you know for the first 15 years right of revit's history that most people operated uh everything was in there right your your entire library got loaded up into the into the project and i think what people you know what what all of our at least customers have found um the idea that you don't want to put all of that data you, the, the projects get bloated enough so the the real goal is to keep as much data outside of the file and only selectively bring in the information all the way down to you know i can show you um we allow you to bring in just a single type right if so if you've got a a family that's got a lot of different types the, our interface lets you just bring just bring that single type and again it's mm -hmm. just about trying to reduce the noise is what i would call it inside of your project files and the bloat of that data so that's that's probably to, to part of that question was why not mm -hmm. just put it all in there um so a lot of our customers if they haven't ever used a, you know a content management system or, or avail specifically they will usually begin if they have loaded a lot of data in, in templates they tend to thin out those templates to just graphic standards and then keep all of your quote unquote content outside of the project and then have an interface for bringing that in as needed right and it just kind of helps with that project bloat um over time so yeah do you think you could uh for people who are not familiar with avail you, you could do kind of a quick demo or quick uh, show the interface and yeah. then we can jump in into some of the new features or talking about containers yeah i'll show you that and then yeah and then and then we can dive into uh i'll just kind of show it to you general i'll go full screen here so you can see it but um you know so avails a this is a standalone piece of what we call the avail desktop piece of software so the easiest way to think about this is this replaces using windows file explorer to go rooting around your network for info um i'll just go full screen so everybody can see it we use a metaphor of channels for letting our customers organize info and data and as you can see i've got a lot of channels this is the i, I demo with this so i tend to keep a lot of uh, a lot of different kinds of content depending on what customers are doing uh, but you know uh, the way i generally describe a um, uh, describe a channel is you know i can go here to like a v-ray materials channel you can think of it like it's a almost like a music playlist so a channel you can basically create a channel and just put stuff in it uh what i think most people uh takes a little bit to think about with what we're doing we don't necessarily take possession of our customers content the content it can be in the cloud or it can be in an on-prem network but ultimately avails just the interface to to pointing to where that data is and a way to see it and uh, search for it but as you can see here and i'll show you this new feature but we've got this uh what we call key cards that let you you know quickly filter uh information like this but everything is searchable in here right so if i knew that i was looking for uh you know something that was the color black i can just type in uh black and you know search across that content very quickly if i <clears throat> go back out on this uh the front screen i'll type in blue this time you can actually search across all of this information so what you're seeing here is I found lots of things that matched that. It was either in the file name or the way things have been tagged. But across the top, you can see that we actually brought back the context that we found that information in. So we found this in some of your marketing assets. We found some materials that were blue, or we found some textures that had the word blue in it. So um, this is all about for our customers using Avail. Can users quickly find uh you know in this sea of information that they're trying to uh to kind of wade through can we help them put their hands on things quicker and you know a lot of times especially with technical content the worst thing that can happen is for you to know it exists but you can't find it and rather than spending 20 minutes looking for it you say well i could just remake it in 20 minutes 
And now you've got two of the same thing. You know, it's just, there's a lot of things that go on inside firms and um, uh, that, that solutions like this can help to uh, kind of hopefully overcome. And can content be in different channels at the same time? It can. And that's, yeah. you know, um, I always like to describe that when we started working, you know, I, I said we started looking at what was the limitations, I'll say, of, of, file, of file Explorer or a Windows file system or any file system for that matter. So I describe it as like we started picking away at the frailties of that. And, and one of the frailties of a file system, a traditional file system is, if you wanted something to be in two different places, you had to make a copy of the file or you could do some arcane kind of symbolic link to it, but nobody ever did that. Um, but in Avail, you can have content in more than one channel at a time. So we talk about context a lot. So it's like the way people want to get to information is very contextual in the way that they're thinking at the moment. So Avail kind of frees up, you know, you store, you can still store your information in a file system, we, the files are still sitting in file systems, but the way you want to consume it and be able to search for it, you know, varies. One of the <clears throat> one of the new features that we added, I'll, I'll just go into like a Rev traditional, like here's the out of the box Revit library of content. So what you're seeing here, this is actually a new feature that we introduced uh, last year called key cards. We call it key cards because uh, the tags that you can put on on your files or the, that are on files inside of Avail are key value pairs of data. So if you've got keys in this example, something like Revit category, you can put this, it's actually data driven off of your content itself. If I showed you, if I turn these off, what you'll see is here are all the files, but if you look down below, here are all the tags. So if I took the Revit category and said, I want to elevate that. I'll just show you what the editor for that looks like real quick. But the key card editor says, hey, pick up the Revit category. And I want to present that as a, I call them gateways to that information. But it's the kind of nice thing here is um, I can use any kind of data. So for instance, if I thought that the host of the file, say a family file was important as an example, I can uh, basically elevate that. I can decide how I want that to be shown in the interface. I can, this is our demo account. So we're always kind of changing colors and things, but it's that quick to be able to change this experience. So now if I turn, turn on my, uh, turn on my key cards, let's get those turned back on. So now if I go into a, uh, let's go into a category like, um, you know, casework's a good example. If I go into casework, I've got base cabinets and wall cabinets. Uh, but I may, you know, as I, as I go into uh, one of these categories, you can see I could have filtered this out by, you know, I need wall hosted families or I need, um, let's see if I've got that on. So these are all don't have a host, but if I moved that out in front instead of the keywords, what you'll see is now, if the most important thing in a in in this uh, library of information was what the host of something is, now when I go into casework, I'm presented with, hey, I need a wall hosted family. Well, I use that as an example. We pick that data up from the Revit files automatically, but nobody, I've never, you know, I, I dare say nobody would ever organize their file folders to put their Revit families in there somehow organized all the way down to what the host of the family is, even though that may be one of the most important criteria that you're using to make choices about, you know, what kind of, what file or kind of content that you're wanting. So I just, I use that as a, uh, you know, as an example of, you know, here's generic models. I want a face-based family. If that's important to you, I want to be able to filter that that quickly. So it's it's those kinds of things that uh, this kind of data driven dynamic interface allows to start to happen that you would never accomplish in in a in a file system. Yeah, we, we, because with Windows you organize in this one very specific way, maybe by categories or so doors or casework. But using this key card feature, you can have many different way of organizing. So it can be by the host type, is it by face or by wall or something else? Uh, but you can also have the same content organized in different ways using this key card. 
Yeah, I would, uh, <laughs> I would, uh, you know, I, I've, I've been in the industry for a lot of years and would you know like to go visit customers. And I can tell you, I, every firm that I would go into and talk about content management, everybody's got issues and we would talk about what the issues were. And uh, every firm that I would go into of any size would say, once a year, we have a committee that gets together and talks about you know, how we should better organize this stuff over here on the file system. And I would hear it over and over and over. And then of course, they're going to have another meeting the next year because it's not working, right? Um, the reason for that, if you peel back the onion, the reason for that is this contextual problem. What somebody needs or wants to see is dynamic. How you get to information changes depending on what you're doing. The file system forces you to choose one way to think about it. And that's that's where there's, you know, I would claim conflict from the way people actually think and the system that we've traditionally used for not only, you know, one of the things I'll, I'll, I'll claim is that you know, we still store data in a file system that's kind of inherent with computers. The problem has been that that we we use the same system for retrieval as we use for storage and you've got a different way that you want to get to the information. So that's, that's what I would claim that we've done with avail. We put this in front of it so that now you've got a much more dynamic way of thinking about getting to this information. You can store it. You got to store it back there in some way, uh, but free up the, and make it more dynamic about the way you get to it. So. All right. So we, we have a few questions from the audience. Yep. I think we'll get there, but something interesting, I don't know if you could showcase or talk about the harvest feature. I think that was uh, one of the most impressive feature when I first uh, yep. in, uh, explored Avail. Yeah, let me, uh, uh, I'll uh, I'll show you kind of how it, because it's evolved. We're actually working on the third generation mm -hmm. of it. It's not, uh, Harvest 3 isn't out yet, but uh, I'll talk in a minute about that. But when it first started, uh, we had a lot of customers. I'm just going to go into this channel and show you uh, details. Details, a detail library was probably, and I would still claim because we see what our customers are doing with 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 this. Details are probably the most oft often uh, used kind of library of assets outside of families per se, and the nature of drafting views, detail libraries related to Revit was, you know, this was the first kind of real use case of, well, these these details, these drafting views have to live in an RVT file. How, how do people get to those today? This is where the terms container library, that's what we call them, warehouse files, I've heard customers calling them, but basically you're kind of forced uh, by the nature of Revit to store this data in an RVT file. So um, when we first started working on this, um, I can actually kind of show you what this looked like. We have, I'm just gonna pull Revit up and give you an example. Um, so here I've got just some container libraries. So here's an example where there's an RVT file. I'm just actually gonna drop this over here just to open up my avail interface. So one of the things that we've been working on is you can see that this interface just popped up. It's not normal to be able to drop an RVT file on a project. So that's one thing that we kind of intercept that. Um, uh, you know, you were forced to either open up that Revit file as another project and copy, beg, borrow, or steal, you know, from one project to the other, or, you know, use the built-in interface to go navigate, see that list, and try to do a standards transfer, right, of that data type from one project to the other. When we first started working on this, we we did this kind of an interface where it's like, look, we can we can make this a little bit easier process, right? To see those things, select them, and you know, drag and drop and bring them into the project. So this is kind of how we started. Uh, I'll just say four or five years ago. After we learned what people were doing, right, and that they needed to see this kind of info and had, you know, libraries of hundreds sometimes of, of, of these drafting views that they needed to be able to see, we began working on what became Harvest. And the idea there was, look, rather than being kind of stuck in this list view interface, 
what I'd really rather do is in this nice you know, work that we've done on this nice interface, I'd really rather go into one of these channels and see, right, very visual in nature, right? That's one of the things that we concentrate on. I'd rather see these details. They're still searchable. I can see the names of them. You know, if I knew I was looking for a jam detail, I can type the word jam and see those. I, we also we also have the ability to, if I open up this, what we call the preview panel on the right, we can see these things in high resolution. So just the nature of not wanting to see words, but see visuals, you know, people um, will we'll claim that search is a piece of it, but seeing is maybe equally important, especially around these kinds of assets to put your hands on things quickly. So, um, so Harvest was this initiative that we had, which was, hey, I'll show you what the interface for that looks like. If I go back to Revit and go to my add-ins, we just have a, we have a plugin interface that lets you choose a, uh, you know, a container library, open it up and basically publish out these kind of individual representations of that in the avail. So they'll show up in avail in this way. So this is the interface that our customers use to publish that stuff. And then once you've done that, now for the end users on their behalf, it's as easy as, you know, if I were to close this, I know this is a title sheet, but it's a sheet that I can just drag over to. If I want to bring this over onto this sheet, I can just drag and drop and avail is going to transfer that, load it, put me in placement mode, let me drop it on a sheet, right? So it's that easy, you know, to think about getting, uh, getting information from what you're looking for into the project. And that's really, you know, where we've tried to spend a lot of time is to make that really simple. And I was telling some of our uh, team internally this morning, usually when things are made to look very simple, it's usually inversely proportional to how complicated it is on the back end to, to just make it that easy, which is what we're in business to do. We try to make this stuff easier and easier for people, people to use. Yeah, and recently you've added the ability to harvest materials from a Revit file as well. Is that right? Yeah. So uh, let me actually let me. I'm gonna. I'll come back and show okay. in the interface what this okay, looks good. like. But okay. let me. I'm gonna use just a couple of slides here that sure, help yeah. explain what technically we're doing. So when we worked on what became Harvest 2.0, we used this word uh, virtualization. So the data still, you know, the, the nature of Revit is that data still has to be stored in that RVT file. We just began looking at, well, why can't we, in the very same way that we approached that Windows Explorer wasn't a very good interface for getting to data on a file system, why couldn't we take the very same concept and say, well, this is actually the very same problem. It's just that these assets, these elements are stuck in this RVT file. So what we do is what we call virtualize those outside of, of, of the RVT file. So when you look at, uh, at an RVT file, we handle families, but really it's these other content types that become cumbersome because they have to be stored in an RVT file, drafting views, groups, legend sheet schedules. We've added materials as a, as a, something that we support by storing those libraries in an, in an RVT project file, and then using that as kind of your library. But the way that our harvest process works is you basically build your library in an RVT file. And then I showed you, we've got an interface that basically says, choose which of these things you want to show up, you know, as part of your library, that's a pre-process that just kind of happens. And that's how we get those high resolution previews and all those kinds of assets that lets this data show up in, in the re in the avail interface that makes it really easy for people to search, find, drag and drop and use, but those now those individual assets, what uh, what Avail does through harvest process is actually saves those assets out into individual little source RVT files. There's some reasons that we technically chose to go that route instead of leaving it all in one, mainly speed. And when it comes to hosting in the cloud, what you don't want to do is every time you've made one change to your central library, you don't want everybody to have to re-download the entire library. You'd rather have that broken up into smaller chunks uh, that are being distributed. But this is basically what what we're doing. You know, we're we're solving that interface problem to that data, 
uh, and avail, you know, then so that that, you know, uh, purpose number one was let the let the users have a much better experience to getting to this data. And then, you know, everybody's used to a family. You just, most people just find a family and they drag and drop it onto their project. We wanted everything else to be that simple. Like, can everything kind of act the same? From the management standpoint, then people that are responsible for trying to build and manage these libraries of information, this process lets them now think about one, once it's virtualized and it's in a veil, the front what the users don't know where the data is coming from. So you can now separate how you're choosing to manage your data from how people are consuming it. So for example, you might choose if you're if you're managing all the way to sheets with drafting views on it, in one file now, you can have the detail items, the drafting views that are made up of those detail items, and ultimately the sheets that might have those details on them all in one container library. So if I went and changed one of my detail items, it ripples through everything else right in my library. That's that's the advantage of that being in that RVT file. But I may choose to then have a second, another file that's got my legends and schedules in it. And another one's got system families or material library in it. And that is a way of like having ease of management from the people trying to management and ease of use for the people trying to consume it, right? All, all in one kind of solutions. Yeah, there's a question from yep. uh, WZ in the chat. Uh, confused here, is a container the same, the same as a channel? So when you're take, talking about a container, you're more talking about the work that a user would do in Revit before harvesting to avail, is that right? Yeah, so a, con a contain what we would call a container file is just an RVT file. An RVT file that's not a project. So mm -hmm. an RVT file that's got assets in it, drafting views, materials, whatever it is that you're wanting to to reuse as a as a reusable asset. We uh the process is today that we index that into a veil, but it's really just so that our harvest tool can get to it. And then ultimately you can decide channel or channels that you want those details to show up in so for example this is a channel where i've just got these details but i've got the very same details in this library this channel where i've got more than just drafting views right so i've got the very same drafting views and here i am using my key cards in front of that data because i know you know that's data driven to be able to uh, represent that but I've also got materials that I'm organizing in this uh, in this channel. So here's materials, and again, I'm using data to drive the ability to filter that down very quickly. You know, system families are one where you're forced, but you know, it's like okay, I've got wall types, and I'm searching for a certain wall type. You know, brick. So I can narrow that down, and then if I'm in my Revit project, I'll just go to a 3D view here. You know, it's as easy as dragging that over into the project. We're doing the transfer of the data and, uh, you know, you can now start modeling with that, right? Just that easily. So real focus on how easy it is to find it. And then that simplicity of all this is, is a drag and drop. Um, another feature that we support is actually bulk loading of this data. So for instance, if you, you know, we do have lots of customers that, um, you know, at the beginning of a project, you may want to bulk load some of those system families into into the project. So if I went back to my walls and uh, I wanted to multi-select these three walls, if I drag those over, uh, our interface kicks in and just says, hey, do you want to bulk load those into the project, right? And it's like, okay, so you can use this as a strategy for bulk loading certain project types or or data into your project, so. All right, so um, I think we uh, there's a link that your team shared with me, and I will uh, show that. Okay, so it's at resources that dot get avail dot com slash Let me copy and paste this into the chat. So if you're interested in uh, trying avail for yourself, here's the link. It should pop up in the chat. And there's a code that only works until tonight at uh, midnight. It's Revit Pure Monthly 100. 
and it gives you 100% off for the first three months. So it's only for live viewers, only works for today. So if you're watching a replay a few weeks or months from now, the code might not work, although you do have access to these other ones as well. So let me copy and paste the code as well. So Revit Pure Monthly 100, if you want to uh, try Avail by yourself. Uh, so it's basically three free months from what, what I understand. So again, resources that get avail.com slash Revit Pure. Okay, I think we should take uh, a few questions. Uh, there was a lot, in fact. So something we learned and we saw that you can drag and drop basically anything from Avail to Revit. And I saw people, well, what's the difference between the Windows Explorer? And you might say that for loadable families, but then Avail includes detailing and system families as well. So it's not just the files that are standalone. So that there's definitely one big thing there. And uh, we do have, I'll, I'll scroll up a little bit. We do have a question from WZ. How does Avail work for materials library for renderings and uh, visualization? Uh, yeah, I was just going to show one other example if I can. Yeah, find sure. It. Yeah, yeah. You can keep finishing. The, the yeah, let me, a, uh, let me find a. Let me find a a family over here that's like a door type that's got a lot of. Um, so if I go into my normal Revit family, uh, just standalone kind of family library. And I, let's go look for a door. Oh, there they are. So if I go into doors and I'm maybe looking at commercial or residential doors, if I select one of those in avail, what you'll see in this, in this interface is that we'll show you the types, including external type catalog, if there's an external type catalog. And this is an example of what I was talking about. Like normally if you just if you just drug that family from your from Windows File Explorer onto your project, it's going to load all of that information into your project, which you know may be fine. You're going to use the normal interface in Revit to go then, you know, model with that in the future. You've got those types. But, you know, what you can see here is, you know, one, you can either load only the specific types. Obviously, there's some files that can have lots of types. Um, but also, it's like if I know that that's the door size that I want or need, I can just drag that single type over and we're going to avails loading that door into the project, but just with that single type. So you can see this little check mark. So that's just a way of us not, of keeping all of that I'll just say chatter or noise out of the project, right? Um, so that's another reason, right? To, to not just want to drag the entire family in because you're going to drag, everything comes with it, right? And it brings it into your file. Uh, question was about materials. Uh, yeah, right there now. was one about, uh, let me scroll up. How does avail work for materials library for renderings and visualizations so well as you mentioned you can harvest new feature you can harvest materials from a revit file and it's easier to manage all your materials right yeah this is an example where these um these are revit materials the the actual material is is in an rvt file um but in the very same way if i want to load that into this project i can just drag and drop it get out of placement mode over here i can um just drag and drop one or multiple of these. Again, bulk load will work. So if I grab those, I'm stuck in placement mode. Hold so that's going to bring those materials up that I can either bulk load those into the project. So I'll just do that. And it, you know, we'll we'll tell you, do you want us to show you warnings or not? I'll just say ignore. And you know, that's going to bring those materials into the current. You're not seeing this it popped up on my other screen for the loading uh, dialog, but um, you know it's just going to load those into the project. Um, so, just a much better interface for being able to get to those materials, see them, and then ultimately, you know, materials are a real weak point. I'll just say they have been for a long time in Revit. This is our kind of first foray into starting to solve um, some parts of that problem. The fact that these are coming out of an RVT file just means a lot of those properties are coming right along with it. So if you've standardized that, we're bringing all those standardized properties in. Um, 
if the question was more general, um, you know, we have a lot of customers managing things like their material libraries, texture libraries and things like that in avail. So here's an example where I've got, you know, thousands of textures and, you know, I might be looking for a brick texture. Maybe I'm building a material and I'm looking for the right texture and, you know, you can just drag and drop uh, these textures. You know, if, if I showed you this, like in the context of Revit, if I wanted to put that on a sheet, it's just a JPEG. And but the nature of Revit, knowing what to do with a JPEG means I can just drag and drop that right out of this interface. So if I was in the material editor and needed a texture, I can build that, you know, uh, use that to organize and bring that data across as well. So, and then I, I think I showed uh, earlier things, you know, as specific as like a V-Ray materials library. Again, the, the, the thing to think about with Avail is if the host application knows how to handle a drag and drop action, then you can drag and drop it from Avail. So very similar. If you can drag and drop it from Windows File Explorer into the application, Avail will do the very same thing. We're using the very same mechanisms as Windows File Explorer to do that. So, uh, All right. There's a follow-up questions about the materials from Helen Gorina. Are the materials harvested with all assets, including thermal and physical? Um, <laughs> uh we we do not I do not think that the thermal properties come over, and that's just a nature of that. Revit is not bringing those that data over. If it's in the material, it will come with the material. It's hard for us to harvest. We can't touch that data when we're doing the harvest process, so it's a little bit disconnected. So this first pass has been mainly towards non-thermal properties and and those kind of more complicated uh things that people might be doing with simulation mm -hmm. um we are um i was i was kind of halfway thinking that we might be far enough along on before this uh knowing that we were i was going to be here on the show to talk about but we do have some customers that we're talking with about working on things like uh embedded carbon data right and how that's tied to materials and the need to be able to see that in these kind of interfaces and then have that data still, you know, be connected through the Revit process. So, you know, things that people are maybe doing with the EC3 database and, and things like that. So we're, we're working with some customers on how, what the importance of that is and how that data might, uh, you know, might interface with Avail. For us, that's a really good example where what Avail's good at is potential, the potential of bringing data together into one interface that might be in different places. So we can fuse different kinds of information together in this interface that you obviously couldn't just do in Windows File Explorer in some other way. So, All right. Other great questions. Another one from WZ follow-up. Will those materials bring the extra files with them, like the roughness, bump, and other choices? So those, the, the pro, you know, if I go into, um, if I go in, back into Revit and just pull up the material editor, um, all of those properties will come through, popped up on my other screen here. All so those properties- appearance are, asset. Yes, all of the appearance mm -hmm. assets, everything comes intact. Mm -hmm. What if, if you would connect it, you know, here's a good example. If I wanted to now bring one of those textures, right, from, um, from this texture library, so if I went back and said, I want to bring that brick, oh, if I could spell, we are getting ready to publish our 2022 list of most misspelled words is uh, getting ready <laughs> to be uh, published. But, you know, here's the example, right? Where I can drag that into that slot, right? If I'm building that material. Mm -hmm. So that's now connected, right? If you, if you know how Revit works, it's basically pointing to that as part of the material definition. So avail you know, that material definition stays intact. What we're not doing is we're not going and grabbing that JPEG and trying to now move it, say, along with that file to somewhere else. So if you hosted that in a cloud location, you know, we're not, we're not pulling that down as part of it, at least not yet. Um, with our Harvest 3.0, we're moving a lot of this to, to process and forge in the cloud. And so that, by nature of that means that a lot of this stuff will be in a cloud location. That makes it a little bit easier for us to help mm -hmm. manage it and all those pieces yeah, that may yeah. need to go with it. But, uh, but for the most part, we, we are not 
going and, and looking for everything that's externally referenced and trying to pull all that stuff along. We're just kind of assuming that that infrastructure is in place and it's, it's there. All right. We have lots of great questions, so I'll make sure to try to cover um, most of them. There was a question about Revit LT. So Revit LT doesn't work with plugin, but some people were asking if you could drag, still drag and drop from Avail to Revit LT. I do not know the answer to that. Uh, if if you can't install the plugin, it requires a plugin. Uh, at least uh, this will be a weird answer. <laughs> <laughs> you could you could put a family file, index it in Avail, and drag that family over into into Revit Lite, and that's no different than if you drag that family from Windows File Explorer. Mm -hmm. The the, the plugin interface that we have here for showing you the type catalogs and handling the transfer of the of the drafting views and the materials and all that that requires this plugin that we've developed to sit to be installed in revit so if lt doesn't let you um, install that plugin you won't be able to take advantage of those features so, okay, so you, you need a plugin for the drag and drop correct Okay, so uh, more questions from uh, Butch Kiris. Does Dropbox play nice with Avail? Yeah, uh, in fact, uh, one of the one of my uh, things that I like to show, I've got a channel here where I tagged. It, wasn't I, there a version with the small icons for uh, where the the file was located? Yeah, this this uh, may be what you remember me showing before, but it's like here. If I didn't label this, you wouldn't know where that content was, and you'd just be able to drag it. But you can see here, I've got you know, a V-Ray material that's sitting over here in Dropbox and I can just drag and drop it, right? And uh, we do the same BIM 360 uh, box, Google Drive, OneDrive, all of that. And that's that that's become another reason of, of the approach that we've taken with Avail, that customers um, kind of appreciate this approach because data is starting where your files are is getting more and more complex. It, it's not all just in one place anymore. So the idea that you can kind of keep assets in the places that they need to live and still have one interface that allows this to work. You know, the end users don't need to know where it is. They just need to know if they can find it in here and can drag and drop it. So the answer, the answer to that, is yes, it should work fine with Dropbox. All right, more great questions from Ellen Gorina. If you combine them in the channel by version, them, I'm, I'm guessing any of the assets, how the tagging can be handled from one version to another. So I guess the question is about versions. There are multiple aspects. I guess there's Revit versions and versions, different versions of the same family. What happens if one of the family is updated? And what happens if you deal with Revit 2020 and Revit 2023 at the same time? Yeah, good question. So, and a good point, Nick, a recognition that when people say version, there's mm -hmm. a difference between yes. like Revit versions and version control. Like, things that have been saved multiple times can I get back to you know an old version of it uh we we avail is not doing anything around version control a lot of times depending on where you're like if you're storing your uh assets in bim 360 there's certain version control that's in there about which version if you've updated it and you can roll back to previous versions so there's kind of things that are built into into the underlying systems that we don't have to even uh, kind of worry about that part of it. The as far as like Revit versions of of um, uh, of Revit, most of our customers tend to, you know, when a new when Revit twenty twenty four comes out right this spring, they'll take their Revit twenty twenty three library, cop copy it over on the network somewhere, do a bulk upgrade to everything, and have a twenty twenty four library. We have some special tools in in uh, in Avail that can be used to uh, to manage these tags. One of those features is what we call uh, the Revit uh, or Tag IO. Um, so over here on the right, like here, I am in this channel of of Revit uh, 2020 data. So what Tag IO lets our uh, customers do is you can actually just download this data into a spreadsheet. And it lets you, you know, a spread. I'll, I'll pop this up and just show you. It's a, it's a. It makes for a very nice way to kind of see the data, and you can find. Um, so here it is. Let's me save this out. And if I save that file out, I can. Uh, 
open this up in Excel now, which popped up on my other screen. But you can see here that this, you know, here's all of those files that are in that channel, where they are on the network. But as you look across here, here's all the tag information, right? Including the key value pairs. So this is a way that, and you, so you can do all kinds of now Excel magic for, you know, bringing other data in and matching it up and cleaning up your data. And so if I made a, uh, so for instance, if I were, if I wanted to just add some brand new data, I'll just make up a kind of silly example here, but I might say, I'm going to put a whole new classification called Revit Pure. And I'm going to say, Nick, Nick, Randall, Randall on those files. And that's all that takes. And if I save that, and I now re-upload that spreadsheet through this interface, we're going to look through and see what's changed. You'll see this here. It's bad to demo with things with a lot of content, but there you can see the changes. And if I apply those, I now have just brought that data in on top. So it's a very quick, easy way to clean up and monitor and add information and data in this way. And then just to kind of, uh, show the point that's a new kind of data that is on my on my content so here you can see revit pure nick and randall information so again if i went back now to my key card editor i could go to my key and say you know what i really want to bring i may have to refresh this channel let me come back in here So now if I go back to my key card editor, that save. And if I decided now that that new information, right, my Revit pure data was the most important thing about this channel, I can now say, hey, publish that. And now when I go back and refresh this channel, I've completely changed the experience of what it means to navigate right uh, through this information. So now... I can say, yeah, I want those Nick files, which happen to be structural rebar, and there's the two files that I tagged as Nick. So yeah, and what happens if there's no information for for the assets? For it'll this... it, it does what we call fall through, so it'll go to the next layer. Uh, so you're okay. always just kind of drilling in and seeing that uh -huh. information. So anyway, right. that, that's just an example of that. Okay, that's great. Still, lots of questions. I haven't time to. To answer, well, there was another question from Butch, the one who asked about Dropbox that says, does a veil chain change where the content lives? I think one big difference for, uh, between a veil and uh, <clears throat> other content management platform is that uh, not everything goes in the cloud. Like you don't just move everything from folder to cloud. So you can keep the files on the location where they're at. Is that right? Correct. So this in this example, if I right click on one of these and say open the location, Let's see where that's going to pop up. You can see that this is just living in a network location drive. So as, as you said, Nick, we, we don't force, we don't take possession of your file. We can, we have a, what we call a hosting cloud solution that puts it in our, one of our cloud storage locations for you. So we have some customers that do that, but probably more importantly, um, you know, this, what I showed a second ago, when people talk about the cloud, it really depends on what, what they're trying to accomplish. There's lots of clouds. <laughs> uh, there's not a single cloud. So if you're already using BIM 360 or you're already using Dropbox or you're already using Google Drive or OneDrive, there's lots of clouds. You're using SharePoint. You're using any of these kinds of places. We, uh, Avail allows you to store, if you choose to, uh, store it in your own cloud. If So if, if your goal is to get it off-prem, off your network into some cloud location, for whatever reason, you can do that either putting it in our cloud or using your own cloud uh, kind of storage for that. So we support any and all of those kind of, and you can do all of that. You don't have to choose one. You can do that on a literally content by content basis. It's like, as you saw in that channel, I've got one channel with data. And if I didn't put those labels on it, you didn't, you wouldn't know that that data was living in you know nine different file systems, some cloud, some on-prem uh, can be a real mix of that. So. There's a question from Eugene Color that asks, how does Avail handle shared parameters? 
Um, so we're not doing anything special as far as, um, you know, if those shared parameters are in those files, uh, if you've already got those in those files, they're coming along with it. So obviously if people are building out a kind of standardized library, they've probably standardized their shared parameters. Um, what I'll say is to date, we have not been writing any data into anybody's files. I used to be able to claim that we didn't even ever take possession of your file, but when we introduced our hosting cloud, we you can actually put that in one of our cloud storage. What we're working on, a new version of Harvest, I kind of mentioned uh, uh, earlier, we're moving that processing to Forge on the back end. So in this case, the files will go, you can host those say in BIM 360 or push them up into one of our cloud locations for that processing. We've also been working on what we've been starting to call param jam. So writing, writing parameters and standardizing parameters and making sure that things are in the in those files. We're actually working on some new versions of being able to do that. So for the first time, you know, we'll we'll start having some tools that help to actually push data in back into the files, not just in what's happening on this front end. So you can imagine, you know, if if I popped up that tag IO interface with a spreadsheet, how cool would it be to say, I've got these shared parameters and I've got some files that don't have the right data in it. I fill that out in the spreadsheet and let avail on the back end and their harvest say, go, go update that mm -hmm. in those files without me having to go, you know, open those or use some other tools. So we're not quite there yet. We're working on it. It's uh, it's coming. You'll see that from us this year. Yeah. Good. All right. So I think there's still a few questions and I know you have a hard stop at 4 PM, which is, just two minutes away. I'll see maybe if there's a, a last one we can take. Uh, from Ning, how Avail integrates with BIM 360, ACC, I assume different platforms? Yeah, good question. Um, so for example, here's a channel where I have all of this content is sitting in BIM 360. We take advantage, uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll answer this specifically for BIM 360, but it's also more generally, most all of these cloud hosted solutions like a BIM 360, ultimately you got to get the data down. So most all of them have some form of a desktop connector for that data to now cache and come down to your local machine. So you're used to that with OneDrive or Google Drive or Dropbox or, or BIM 360. You know, how do I see that in Windows File Explorer? They're all using the same technology to do that. What we, uh, as we began to understand that um, the way all that worked, we basically get to take advantage of it. So any of those solutions where you're wanting to host your source content in a cloud location like BIM 360, Avail, you can index that, it can show up in Avail. We take advantage of that when you when you go to use it on at each user's machine, it just triggers the, the desktop connector to actually pull that data down and the user you know, doesn't have to doesn't have to do anything. It just triggers that information to kind of flow down. So, all right. So it's it's four p.m. I know you have to go. So what is the? <laughs> how can people get started with Avail? So they should download a trial. And the, do you have some getting yeah, started we, videos, something like that? Tons. Uh, yeah, we we've always had a free to use strategy. So there's always there's a free version of Avail that you can just go download, begin using. Mm -hmm. It just has limits to how much data we let you put in it. But you can create a couple of channels. You can begin indexing, and you can put your Revit content in there and start to mess around. You know, and understand how the tool works. That was that's always been very important to us to let people actually put their hands on things. Uh, we when you open that up for the first time, there's a learning channel. Uh, that learning channel has lots of video webinars and of course they're tagged. So you can see like, if you wanted to learn about harvest, you can go to that, open up this preview panel and it's just a YouTube video that'll walk you through and explain how this kind of stuff works. So there's lots of kind of self-help learning uh, in this learning channel that you can learn the ins and outs of avail. We also do webinars. I know um, we've got one planned, I think on the 17th of this month. So if you download it and you wanna like jump in with our customer success team on, you know, really understanding kind of the ins and outs of how to, how to leverage this, that would be a good thing to sign up for. Uh, all right, so right now I am uh, yeah, sharing the page at resources that 
getavail.com slash revitpure. And you can use code, use this link over there uh, on the left and the code revitpure monthly 100 and you get three free months. So if you don't avail, you'll have a channel for learning videos, get started. I've used it and it's a really cool platform. Um, just making sure. Yeah, there's a few questions we didn't have time to uh, to get to, but I think most of them uh, have been answered. So any final words, anything else you wanted to share? before uh, no i, I because, well thanks for having me on the show again and you know i i said before we went live that um you know we, we've been a sponsor uh, people may have seen some of our ads but we're uh, we're always try to be supportive of of people in the industry that are teaching and training we always think that that's an important part of it so just thank you for the work that you're doing and uh, keep doing that and uh, we'll keep trying to support you from that standpoint and then you know these are we, we try to, um, you know, these are comp these can become complicated kind of issues. So I think, you know, obviously we need people to buy a veil for, to support what we're doing, but we also spend, you know, I spend a lot of time talking with people and trying to really understand the problem. And, and then we go to work on, Hey, technically, how would we solve this and can we simplify it? So it's, um, uh, you know, the, it's needed, right. These interfaces with the people actually doing this stuff every day and the complications of it. And, you know, we go, um, so it's, it's important, these kind of formats. So I appreciate your, your, your doing this and having us on. All right. Well, th thanks for sponsoring the, 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 the season that just concluded, uh, yep. late last year of uh, rivet pure live. And we've got another season coming soon that I will announce probably in the, within a couple of weeks, uh, the, the winter season uh but it's not yet public so i'll keep following with that and once again before uh, leaving resources that get avail.com slash revit pure the link is in the description of this video and you can get uh three months for free with avail uh highly recommended you can have a look and try it by yourself uh the harvest feature is it's pretty cool if you haven't played with it and you've struggled to manage your content it's uh, totally worth it. So thanks to everybody in the chat. Lots of good questions. Sorry if we didn't have time to cover every single one of them. Uh, I hope this was still uh, pretty helpful. So thank you, Randall. That was super interesting. I know you're teaching at college and you got to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say we could stay on here another half hour, but I yeah, got yeah. class in a half hour, so I have to run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So, uh, all right, let's conclude with that. So thanks, everybody. And see you all. We'll announce the next episode within a few days. So thanks, everyone. See you. Bye. Thank you.